Traveling via magnets at speeds of over 1,000 km per hour might sound like an idea from Star Trek, but with Hyperloop, that could be a realistic achievement by the end of the decade. But what exactly is Hyperloop? How does the technology work? And how soon can we expect to make journeys from New York to Washington DC in just 30 minutes? Here's how it happened. Most sources attribute the earliest conception of Hyperloop to English engineer George Medhurst, who 200 years ago proposed the notion of rapid transport using a large tube and air pressure. Of course, the technology at the time was not even close to catching up with Medhurst's idea, and for several decades, the closest we came to a high-speed travel network was the monorail, an invention that has failed to hit the mainstream in the West, but has boomed across Asia, with services like the Shanghai Maglev train reaching speeds of up to 270 miles per hour. The use of a vacuum for mass public transport only really arrived in public consciousness thanks to a 2012 interview with Elon Musk, in which the tech entrepreneur detailed his idea of using pressurized capsules in tubes to travel long distances at near supersonic speeds. Later comparing Hyperloop technology to a cross between a Concorde, a railgun and an air hockey table. His proposal included a route between San Francisco and LA that would take just 35 minutes, with a construction cost of $6 billion, a modest estimate for such an ambitious plan. Teams from two of Musk's companies, Tesla and SpaceX, began work on the Hyperloop concept, making the project open source to help achieve his goal as quickly as possible. In 2014, Iranian-American venture capitalist Shervin Peshevar used Musk's 57-page white paper as the basis for his own high-speed transport company, co-founding Hyperloop Technologies and quickly raising $37 million in funding. The firm hired engineers, moved to a new new LA campus and its prototype passenger pod could hit speeds of over 300 km per hour, using magnets to levitate the capsule in a near vacuum atmosphere. Come 2017, and Richard Branson's Virgin Group wanted a slice of the action, investing undisclosed millions into the firm and resulting in a rebrand to Virgin Hyperloop One. Virgin's expertise in long-haul air travel, as well as domestic train services, was seen as an ideal fit to help propel the Hyperloop project onto the mass market. Branson joined the company's board of directors, and research was conducted on possible destinations of Hyperloop One's technology. The potential sites included between Mumbai and Pune in India, the Texas Triangle, and through several major cities across Europe, and found that the new mode of transport could greatly reduce travel times for any journey less than a thousand miles. In 2020, the organization re branded once again, gaining a new logo and website while losing the one from its name, to become known simply as Virgin Hyperloop. And in November of that year, the first ever passenger trial took place, transporting now CEO Josh Geigel and head of passenger experience Sara Lucian at speeds of 107 miles per hour on its Nevada test track. While this might only be a fraction of Virgin's target of 670 miles per hour, the trial was still a huge step forward for the technology. But how feasible actually is the technology, and when will we see it? Current targets for passenger services are around 2030, and are most likely to be on the route presently underserved by existing networks, like a potential 50-minute Hyperloop trip from London to Edinburgh, much quicker than the 7-hour drive, and also 20 minutes shorter than the current flight time. And in terms of cost and efficiency, Virgin claims that riding a Hyperloop loop in the state of Missouri could cost less than the gas required to make the same journey by car, while cruising at 500 miles per hour on Hyperloop would expend less energy per passenger than an electric car travelling at 60 on the highway. So although it might not be imminent, competition from the likes of SpaceX, Transpod and Hyperloop TT are sure to make this industry the one to watch over the next 10 years. And that's how it happened. Let us know if you'd like to try Hyperloop whether you think the technology will ever reach the mainstream, and what you'd like to see in future videos. Thanks for watching.